Hey, hey, it's Sheeta here, and today I'm talking about financial minimalism. I mentioned a few videos ago about how I retired at 39, and financial minimalism was one of the strategies that got me there. So I'm gonna tell you all about it today. What is financial minimalism? In his video, A Minimalist Guide to Personal Finance, Matt Avila describes financial min minimalism, can't even say it, describes financial minimalism as spending less than you make. spending less than you make. Not not the most helpful, right? Like, spend less than you make, ooh. Um, so let's, let's keep going on that one. Um, I watched that whole video and I was like, what? I do these things so you don't have to. So I kept searching for like more definitions because I know what my definition is, but I wanted to look at other people's definitions. So I looked at uh, my friends in the head uh, our rich journey over in Portugal. I looked to see if they had a video about financial minimalism and they do. It's called, ooh, what is it? Uh, financial minimalism, a strategy to retire early is the name of it. And they talk about financial minimalism and how they use that to retire early, which I did too. Um, their definition of financial minimalism, and I want to read this so I make sure I get it right, is spending money on the things that are essential to you. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't quite work for me. So the definition of financial minimalism that I used and that I used to retire early was spending money only on the things that were essential to my future. So I looked at the life I had now, but when I talked about money and I made plans for my money, I made plans for the life I wanted to have. So. I paid off debt early because I wanted to be debt free in the future and that was important to me. And so um, I did a lot to pay off debt early. Uh, so it's, for me, it's that. It's what do you want your future to look like and how can you get there? But there's more, just wait, there's more. My strategy for financial minimalism, which is different from my definition, was to do the least with the most. I'm gonna say it again. Do the least, the absolute least with the most. So let me walk you through that. I want you to simplify every part of your financial process that you can. Everything about your money, make it more simple. Find a way to simplify everything you do. Create one goal for yourself, one financial goal. Is it paying off one credit card? Is it paying off all your debt? Is it paying off your student loans? Pick the goal that you are most excited to work towards and work towards that one goal. There's no right and wrong with money. We're all gonna do things that will cost us more interest here. We'll make a little mistake there. We could have saved three shiny pennies if we had paid off this debt before that debt. Do what makes you feel good and do what you will actually do. Pick one goal that you are willing to chase until you chase it down and then move on to the next goal. I can't tell you what the right goal is, but I can tell you that when you pick one thing, you're much more likely to get it done. Think of it like this. Nelly wanted two purrs. He wanted two pairs of Air Force Ones. But Nelly only has one pair of feet. So every time Nelly has, gets his two pairs, he wears one and the other one is sitting sad in the closet, unattended, just waiting waiting for him to come back. And the next morning, Nellie has to decide which one of these two pairs am I gonna wear again? Maybe it was the one he wore yesterday, maybe it's the other one. And that's what a lot of people are doing with their money. They're giving it to one pair one day, one pair the next day. And what happens is it takes you longer to wear those shoes until it feels like it's the time to get a new pair of shoes. It takes you longer to get to the next goal because you're focused here, you're focused there, and you lose your momentum. So Nelly's not gonna get to his next pair of shoes, maybe some Jordans, I don't know, uh, because he's keeping the focus on two shoes. And he can only wear one at a time. Nelly only needed one pair of Air Force Ones. Can we talk about that? He needed one pair. I guess you got your club pair. Did you have a club pair of shoes? I know this is a total sidetrack, but now you have like an everyday pair of, of Air Force Ones and like a fancy going out. Is that what guys do? Fancy going out 
Air Force Ones. Anyway, don't do that with your goals. Don't have like a, I focus on this every day, and then when this is around, I sometimes focus on this, and then maybe there's a third thing. You're gonna get distracted, you're gonna lose focus. One. All right, let's get back to Nelly real quick. Every morning, Nelly has to look at his two pairs of shoes and decide which one he's going to wear. That's a question every day. That's, those are decisions you have to make. Don't you have better decisions to make than which goal you should be chasing with your money? When you get a paycheck in, whether you should do X or Y, pick X, have X as your goal. And then when you get to X, go to Y. That's what you need to do if you wanna hit your goals. Not two pairs. You don't have to decide between two pairs of the same shoes every morning or two goals that you want every time a paycheck comes in. Decide on one and you've got this. When you decide on one goal, you're not constantly using brain space to figure out what you should do, what the right decision is. You have already decided. It is done. It doesn't matter. You have decided. Decision fatigue. Like you've been, you have been there. I know you've been there before where you're like, I am tired of making decisions. When your money comes in, sometimes it's overwhelming because it's like, should I do X? Should I do Y? I don't know what the right answer is. There's no right answer. Pick something, hold on to it for a while and do that. That is my strategy to financial minimalism. And not only do I want you to only have one goal, I want you to simplify the tools you have. There was a time when I was following like the best advice online and it was like, you need to have different accounts for different savings goals and this and that. Y'all, I think I was banking at five different banks at that time following this advice because I had two uh, brick and mortar banks because I had a bank that was out, that was mainly mostly out of state and a bank that, so I had to get one that was in state. So that was two banks. Uh, and then I had like three different online banks because I had accounts here, accounts there. I got a little, little extra bonus for opening an account there. So I did that. So if I wanted a clear picture of my money, I had to log into five different places and start figuring things out. That's too much work. Why? Why? And then within the five bank accounts, I think I had like 12 sub accounts because I had an account for travel and for vacation and for emergencies and for... Grab you a spreadsheet. Truly, get a spreadsheet. You don't need bank at one place, please. Your brick and mortar bank probably has online options that are just as great as the other on online banks are. They may pay slightly less interest, but ain't nobody paying you interest these days anyway. On a bank account, on a savings account, on a checking account, you're not getting any money from that anyway. So the slightly more interest is not worth having multiple banks in multiple places. It's not. Okay, so you're gonna tell me, so I'm not the only one. What is the most amount of bank accounts you've ever had or most amount of banks you've banked at? Because I know I can't be the only one that had money like boop, 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 all over the place. Tell me, please let me know that I'm not alone, <laughs> please. Thank you. Like I said, do the least with the most and your money will become so much easier to manage. It becomes so much easier to take care of it when you have one bank that you use. Actually, to be perfectly transparent, I have bank accounts. I have two different bank accounts now. I have my Bank of America bank account, which I've had since I was 18. I don't see myself letting it go even though nobody loves Bank of America. Um, and I, ha I do have a Charles Schwab account because I can get fee-free checking. So I can use my ATM in any country in the world and not get charged uh, ATM fees. And because I spend the majority of my life overseas out of America where there are no Bank of Americas, that makes sense for me. So there's a specific purpose for me having two bank accounts. my I don't even know what the balance in my Charles Schwab bank account is because I haven't been to the ATM in forever, um, but it is low enough that I don't consider it money. Like it's not money that I have, it's just what I need when I go to the ATM because I always have enough to at least get a couple hundred out of the ATM in there, but not enough that I'm like, oh, that's money I can count in my net worth. It's not, it's a couple hundred bucks. Wherever you can, use one tool instead of multiples that do the same thing. I've been using Mint to track my accounts, my transactions, trends, budgets, since a thousand years. I don't know, it feels like forever. Um, there are probably much better tracking apps and software now than Mint, but 
I only want to use one thing and I like that Mint has all my historical balances so I'm not transferring. Okay, your turn. If you use tracking software and you love it, like that can an aggregator that gets all of your account information in one place and you can see it all, let me know what it is. Um, if you love it, if you don't, if you've used Mint and you like this method or this site or app better, let me know. I am open to new things. It's hard to get me to change. <laughs> Once I find something I like, I stick with it. But if there's something that's better than Mint, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Um, but like I said, only use one. Pick one. Don't be in like six different sites. Over here doing this, over here doing that. Find one thing that does it all and just do it. Keep it simple. And that way it's easier and you're more likely to follow through. Let's talk about investment accounts. I used to have uh, some 401ks with Fidelity. I had my non-retirement funds with Vanguard. I had some old 401ks from old companies with Fidelity and I had a new 401k with a company I was with. And I think that was like two different logins over here and the Vanguard login, no boom. If I wanted to know how much money I had saved, I had to go to all of those accounts. I don't wanna to have to find out my investments by going to like three different logins. I rolled those Fidelity 401ks over to Vanguard all of my money is in Vanguard. I log in and Vanguard tells me, okay, is this, this what you're working with? And that's it. I don't have to chase anything down. Keep it simple. You're much more likely to make your goals if you can to manage your money properly if you keep it simple. This is what financial minimalism means to me. Pick the goal that most reflects what you want your future to be and your strategy to get there is to make everything as simple as possible on your way there. If you could, whatever you can automate, automate. Whatever you can simplify, simplify. If there's a step in your process you're doing now you don't need, cut it out. Cut it out. I'm not going to tell you that not paying for Netflix is going to get you to retire early. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not gonna tell you to stop going to Starbucks. Although some of you specifically, I have told you. Um, but I am gonna tell you that the easier you make it for yourself is the more likely you are to get it done. So I want you to simplify. And when I say do the least with the most, I want you to one goal, simple strategy, take as much money as you can towards your goal using simple strategies, as much money, the most, as much money, pile of cash. I wish a pile of cash upon you. As much money as you can towards one goal. Do the least, one goal. Whatever your goal is, one goal with the most amount of money. Do the least with the most. That is my advice for you. That is my financial minimalism advice. This is what I got for you today. So that's it, y'all. Pick one goal, chase that goal, simplify at every step that you can. Most financial goals get left in the dust because they're too complicated or they take too long or someone got distracted by something shiny. Don't do that. If you focus on one thing at a time, that singular focus will get you to your financial goals. I know you can do it and I'm wishing you the best. Bye. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to say this. I almost forgot. What kind of YouTuber am I? If this video helped you, subscribe below, turn on notifications, give it a thumbs up, give me a little comment, let YouTube know that you liked this. Thank you.